Hello, Bethany. Great to be speaking to you on this beautiful Tuesday. I'm looking outside, and the sun's all shiny, and I'm starting to realize I need to move away from my sliders in my dining room and go to a more secluded room because I'm too busy watching the squirrels and the birds play. But that's not why we're here today. Today, I'd like to continue our reading of the post-resurrection story in John. If you remember yesterday, we left off with uh, Jesus calling on Peter to tend his sheep, to feed his sheep, and to tend his lambs. At the same time, getting Peter to admit his love for him three times as a stance against the three times Peter denied him. So the conversation with Peter and Jesus continues. This is uh, John chapter 21, and we'll start at verse 18. Very truly I tell you, Jesus says to Peter, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you wish you, you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said, Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. So the rumor spread in the community that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is testifying these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. But there are also many other things that Jesus did. If every one of them were written down, I suppose the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Here ends our reading. Peter's being told by Jesus how he's going to die. And Peter looks back at who we assume is John, the author of this book, and says, what about him? It's interesting because John is the only one of the 12 who did not die a violent death, who did not die at the hands of either themselves, like Judas, or at the hands of authorities. Now, Peter will be put on a cross, but demand that he be put on it upside down so that he would not be like on a cross like Jesus. In order to do that, they tied a belt around him to keep him on the cross so his suffering would last a long time which was the whole reason for the cross. But what's interesting is throughout, throughout this passage, Jesus keeps saying to, Jesus, to, John, to Peter, I'm sorry, to Peter, follow me, follow me. It's not just follow me now, like John was following them. It was a commandment to go on my way. You know, I love the, the story that's told by uh, Rob Bell, and I've also heard it done by some of my seminary professors before I even knew of Rob Bell, that it was the old ancient um, proverb uh, that may you carry the dust of your rabbi, may you follow so close to your rabbi that you are covered in his dust at the end of the day. What Jesus is telling John is not to walk over with me, he's telling him to follow me. Do what I did. Teach what I taught. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Teach what I commanded. Heal the sick. Care for the poor. Pray for those who persecute you. All of those things that Jesus did. Proclaim the kingdom of God has come in Jesus. All of that is what Peter is being told to do. And through Peter, you and I. That's what disciples do. They do what the rabbi did. Now John dies an old man, 
And Peter dies before his time. And so do the others. But they all followed. They all followed Jesus as best as they could in their human capabilities. Yes, they stumbled. Yes, they got into disagreements, just like the church now. Peter and James and Peter and Paul and Paul and James and Paul and Barnabas and Paul and Mark, they all had disagreements because they were human, just like we do. But they followed Jesus. They put the other first. They showed love to their neighbors. I like how they say it in Acts 2, that they had the good will of all the people, which means they behaved in such a way that the people looked at them and said, wow, I really like this group. That's how the church is to be seen. Not as something or someone saying, I'm so much better than you, behave like me. No, but as someone who says, I love you because you're a child of God like me. I love you because you're flawed and broken like me. I love you because you have difficult times like me. I love you because God loved me first. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you believe. It doesn't matter who you live with or how you live. I'm to love you and call on you to love your neighbor too. To follow Jesus, to put people before things, and to love them with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, just as God calls us to love each other and God's self. May we follow Jesus, not worry so much about how the other disciples are doing, but may we follow Jesus. May we show the love he showed today and every day. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, you call on Peter to follow you. You call on us to follow you. Cover us with your dust that we may walk so close to you that we step on the back of your sandals. Be with us every day so we may follow you even in these difficult times. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have a fantastic Tuesday. Tomorrow we will have some sort of story for the children, so please come and join us. God's blessings.